I never pull all-nighters. I never miss the gym even if the most important test of my life is tomorrow. And I always study at the same seat at my desk every single day. Why don't I do these things? Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you four evidence-based tips on how to actually prepare best for a heavy day of studying. Studying the right way is important, but what about what we do before we start studying? after we start studying. Just like bodybuilders and big weightlifters can maximize their gains from the gym by eating a certain diet and sleeping a certain amount of time, we can maximize our gains from a heavy day of studying by how we do certain things after and before we study. These aren't gonna be tips or techniques for how to study. I'll be making a video on that in the near future. These are just gonna be tips and techniques for what to do when you're not studying. What you can do when you're not studying to maximize that information sticking in your brain and actually for your brain to start creating new connections even while you sleep. So let's start with sleep. There was this really cool experiment where researchers took participants and had them complete the Tower of Hanoi task. If you've never seen the Tower of Hanoi task, it's just this kind of test where you have to move rings onto different poles. So what happened to these subjects? Well, they got to try the Tower of Hanoi challenge once. Then they were retested, but they were retested in different kinds of scenarios. Amazingly, when they were retested on the Tower of Hanoi test a week later, without any practice in between, their performance improved by 40%. However, if you let them try this Tower of Hanoi task the next day, right after doing it the day before, but you mess with their REM sleep, no such improvement is seen. So that sounds to me like sleep is probably important for learning, right? Well, I'll give you one better. In another experiment, subjects were taught an algorithm for solving a kind of complicated math problem, but there was actually a better way, an easier way to solve this math problem that if you thought about it enough, you could figure out. This was a secret technique that the researchers didn't tell the participants about. During the experiment, none of the participants kind of figured out this secret technique. They waited 12 hours during the day, so they tested them in the morning and then tested them later at the night. This was before any sleep would happen and C wanted to see if anyone could figure out this new way of solving it. Some did figure out kind of later on, this, this 12 hours later, kind of how to solve this. But what if you tested a set of people, again, you gave them 12 hours in between tests, but instead of 12 hours in the day, so morning to night, you gave them night to morning. So you let them have a full night of sleep before retrying this complicated math problem, which there is a secret easier way to solve. Remember, both of these subjects get 12 hours of time in between their first test and their second test. But one group of people got that time during the day and the other group of people got that time during the night. So guess what? The people that slept on it or slept on the problem, the rate of the discovery of this easier solution more than doubled. Super cool to me. I don't know, it kind of shows to me how important sleep is. Not only overnight is the sleep locking in our memories, but judging from this last experiment, it seems that our brain is also trying to figure out better ways to connect pieces of information inside our head. Our brain is coming up with new solutions and answers to problems while we're floating away in dreamland. And even though we don't remember our dreams and don't remember what happened during the night, we wake up usually with a better understanding of what we learned the previous day. One of the biggest handicaps you can actually put on yourself before a test is not getting a good night's sleep. Sleep is a huge topic and it's one that's really interesting to me. If you wanna learn more about it, I suggest you check out a book called Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. He says kind of many things about this topic, but the one thing that stood out to me, he said, once you start to drop below seven hours of sleep, you start to see detriments in health and performance. The quality of your sleep is also important. So here are just some quick things he suggests. He suggests increasing bright light exposure during the day, reduce blue light exposure in the evening. I always have my Mac go to night shift mode and turn as far to red as possible. Avoid caffeine in the evening. Caffeine has a pretty long half-life, so even though you drink it and you may feel the effects kind of for only four hours, it actually sticks around your system for four, another four hours after that and another four hours after that. Try and go to bed and wake up at consistent times. Avoid alcohol, especially before bed. Keep your bedroom as dark as you can and colder than you think. Uh, it's recommended from a couple sources to keep it around 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, this differs person to person, but you wanna keep it colder than you think. Personally also, I have found that showering or taking a bath before bed really helps me go to sleep. And I've almost classically conditioned myself to get tired after I take a shower at nighttime because after I take a shower, I go straight to bed. So bottom line, aim for eight hours of quality sleep. 
The number two tip out of four for how to best kind of prepare for studying when you're not actually studying is exercise. I actually maybe discovered this on my kind of long study times alone. I found that if I sit at a desk for a long, long time, I get kind of fidgety. And if I just do some push-ups or do some sit-ups or just get up and get out of my desk and do some kind of exercise, when I sit back down, I actually feel better and can usually focus better. Exercise seems to play a role in how well our memory works. In one study, two bouts of three minutes of intense treadmill running, so that's running on the treadmill for three minutes pretty hard, times two, before doing vocabulary tasks, increased peripheral concentrations of catecholamines indicated in memory such as, dop such as dopamine and epinephrine, and accelerated the rate of learning by 20%. I'm gonna push even a little bit more here. One meta-analysis looked at 21 studies and the effect of acute and long-term cardiovascular intervention or exercise on human memory. Acute exercise improves memory in a time-dependent fashion by priming the molecular process involved in the encoding and consolidation of newly acquired information. So again, I'm not giving any medical advice. Again, I don't know anything about medicine yet. I'm still only a second year medical student, but these are just the recommendations that I've seen from these journals. How do we take advantage of this information, these kind of reports that exercising helps memory work better? Well, we exercise, we do, do whatever exercise you like. This could be playing soccer, going for a run, lifting weights. And I think it's better. It seems like the research most supports either exercising kind of before you study or mid study, as opposed to after you're done studying is because it seems the evidence is kind of less emphatic on exercising after studying. So bottom line, I would say exercise before or in between studying. Tip number three is your environment. Where are you studying? How are you gonna be learning these things? Take advantage of classical conditioning here. Every time I sit at a certain spot on my desk or in a seat at my desk, I know it's study time. If it's play time or if I wanna like do some random things on the internet or even if I wanna do YouTube stuff, I'll actually just sit on a different side of the table or I'll sit at a different kind of place in my apartment just because I wanna condition myself because I know in this place, I'm gonna be working on med school stuff and studying. In this place, I'm gonna be chilling out and in this place, I'm gonna be doing YouTube stuff. That's why I never ever do any work in my bed because my bed is kind of just for sleeping. So I'm only going to go in my bed when I want to sleep and not when I want to work. And if the location that you're at right now isn't working and you have the option, try a new location. Maybe this is the library. Maybe this is a hopefully quiet coffee shop. Maybe this is a friend who's really nice and will let you study with them, who hopefully isn't too distracting. Find a nice quiet workplace where you can focus and maintain that same workplace every day you study. Because every day you study in that same workplace, every day you work hard in that same workplace, you're gonna condition yourself to remember that in this place, I will work hard and I will study hard. Next, I would say clean your workplace. In my high school psychology class, I think this was about 10 years ago, uh, I remember I did an experiment with my friend and our experiment was, okay, we're gonna have people try and memorize this list of terms but we're gonna put them in three different situations. The first situation is completely quiet, memorize as many of these terms as you can, and then we'll test you afterwards. The second scenario is we're gonna play some annoying noise, so a buzzing noise or a distracting beat kind of in the background while they're memorizing these terms. The third situation is we're gonna put distracting imagery on the screen and play things and show things to kind of distract the people. So distracting them visually, distracting them auditorily, what did we learn from our experiment in that psychology class? Well, we actually saw that it seemed that people were able to remember 25% more information when there was complete quiet, when there was no kind of distracting noises or there was no distracting visual thing. Now, of course, we shouldn't put complete faith in 16-year-old Zach's high school psychology experiment, but I think we can put some faith in these peer-reviewed journals. And what does the research say? Well, it kind of says the similar thing. Distracting environment, a distracting noise will kind of harm your retention of information. This doesn't necessarily apply to sounds that drown out other noises. So if you're in a city or if in your house where there's a lot of noise on, but you can put on noise-reducing headphones with rain sounds or ambient noise or something like that, that will help you drown out the background noise that may actually help you as opposed to hurt you retain information. Finally, I just want to give a shout out to an amazing book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Mary Kondo. I hope I said that name right. This is a quote from the book. 
It is not our memories, but the person we have become of those past experiences we should treasure. This is the lesson that these keepsakes teach us when we sort them. The space in which we live should be for the person we are becoming now, not for the person we were in the past. And maybe this is a bit deep for kind of a studying video, but I think it's a really good point. I'm kind of use your space as an indication of who you want to become as opposed to what you were in the past. So bottom line, what should you do? Set a consistent place for studying that is clean, quiet, and yours. My final tip is a tip about your mindset when you study. One major shift in my mind that I've started to do before I start studying or when I'm doing something that I feel like I have to do, instead of framing it as I have to study, I have to work, frame it as I get to do this thing. I get to study. I get to learn these amazing things. I get to work with these amazing teachers and professors. This change of mindset has improved my motivation and kind of happiness while I'm studying for long, long times. Side note, this can also be applied to other things you have to do. But yeah, I'm in medical school. Isn't that amazing? I've tried so hard to get here. It took me so long to get here and I'm finally here. I finally get to learn about the human body. I finally get to be in the hospital. I finally get to do the things I've dreamed of doing for as long as I can remember. The other major change in mindset that I've had is from a book that I read recently called how to Stop Worrying and Start Living by Dale Carnegie. My favorite thing I learned from this book is to live in day-tight compartments. Well, what does that mean? Well, only focus on the thing you're gonna be completing that day. Yes, you have a big test coming up in a week. Yes, you have to study all these things, but you hopefully you've made a plan before so you know what you're gonna study in that day. Don't think about what you're gonna study tomorrow or the next day or the day after that. Just focus on what you're gonna be studying that day. What are you doing right now? Just focus on that. A quote from the book is, if you want to avoid worry, do what Sir William Osler did, live in day tight compartments. Don't stew about the future, just live each day until bedtime. And my last mindset tip is to know specifically what you are going to be studying that day. Because if you don't set where you're gonna be studying that day, how are you gonna live in a day tight compartment? And the specifics of what you'll be studying that day should be specific, right? It shouldn't be, Today, I'm going to study biology. No, it should be today, I'm gonna to study chapter two of biology, chapter three of biology. I'm gonna do 20 practice questions and I'm gonna review 100 flashcards or something like that. It really just needs to be something that you know exactly what to do so you can get down and do it. I have other videos about this, but I personally make my day for day exam strategy nine days before my exam and I make my week strategy during kind of a regular week of studying Friday before the next week. Bottom line, change your mindset from you have to do this to you get to do this. Only focus at the task at hand, live in day tight compartments and know specifically what you will be studying, exactly what you will be studying before you actually get started. These are things that I've kept to consistently that I think have made the biggest difference in my studying outside of actual studying. But that is it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.